Graham here, got myself out for another wild camp. Um, it's so windy, we're expecting 30 to 40 kilometre winds on the ridge, and so temperature between minus one and minus five. And I don't know if you can hear me, I hope the dead cat works because it's so windy, even at lower levels here. Hen hole's just over there, and it's actually quite tempting to go and camp in there tonight. But I'm gonna resist it. Got higher up. So I've, I've looked at the last few videos that I've done, and they're all in like bothies or forests, which for me it's the absolute best when it comes to good cracking companionship and spending time with your friends and that. But sometimes you need to come somewhere wilder and cleaner, if you know what I mean. So I'm heading up the College Valley and the idea is I'll either camp near the, the mountain refuge hut or I'll go higher onto Orkup Cairn and camp there. I think it partially depends on how windy it is. But I love coming up here because 250 million years ago these tributes were volcanoes in a shallow sea. And you, you come up here and you, you get a sense of geological time and how insignificant you are, or I am. Maybe you're not that insignificant, but like, oh, oh, insignificant in a good way. You realise all your problems are insignificant as well. And I always find if you go for a walk in the hills, you can chew through problems in your head and it all seems solvable on the flank of a big hill or a mountain. All your problems are solvable up here. Well, apart from the problem where you get lost, get hypothermia and have to call mountain rescue. But we're all a bit more sensible than that. This folk be glad of this place, haven't they? But it's pretty basic. I reckon you could sleep on one of those though. Yeah, that's the idea, isn't it? All the essentials are here in the hut. You've got your, your nail clippers. You've got your bag of original cool Doritos. And you've got the visitor book. Some matches. In a little, I guess that's a first aid kit, isn't it? There's a, like a surgical dressing, some bonjilla tape, and a tampon. Nosebleed. Yeah. Good for, and some some tissue, some toilet roll. That is always handy. So I'm really starting to lose the light now. The wind's getting wild. Hope you can hear me.
really nice to be out the wind now that the tent's up. I've got a new Xbed mini pump for Christmas and it doubles as a power bank and a, a lamp so we'll try that and see how it works. Works pretty well. So for me bait, I don't know if the light's too bright, but what I've got is a tomato pasta salad, British Army MRE. It expired a year past November, so it'll probably be alright. I'm going to have to cook inside the tent though and have to be a bit careful with the stove inside the tent. Looks pretty grim. I don't know if you can, can you see that? But I'm hungry. out how I can get better coffee camping and I got this organic coffee brewer thing given to us by a lad at work so thanks Rob I'll give this a go you fill it up there's a level here as to how strong you want it and Pretty strong, I think. And you leave it for a few minutes and then pour it out. So. A bit more. Seal it up. Leave it for eight minutes, and then we'll we'll have that. What I've also got for me pudding is a, um, the old cinnamon MRE bun thing, and I think I've got some strawberry jam here. But I got this from a, a Lithuanian ration pack, and it's, it hasn't got it's not got any English on it. But it's in a the type of single container you get jam in and it's it's sort of a pinky colour so I think that's I think that's strawberry jam dear me it smells like strawberry or raspberry but it's all crystallised it's absolutely hard as rock that's probably because it expired in 2019 so three years out of date Try a tiny bit. It's some sort of jam, but it's gone hard as nails. I don't, I don't think I can eat that. I'll try a bit more. It's just too hard. I'm gonna have to eat the bun by itself. It's been a good few minutes now. It's got some sort of nozzle here. What do you do with this? Oh! Is it meant to snap? 
maybe it's meant to snap. It smells good. Smells like real coffee. And tastes like it too. It's okay to drink coffee in the evening because I'm it's basically only six o'clock. I've been here already for an hour and it's not gonna get light till eight. I'm, I'm gonna be tent bound for at least another 14 hours or so. So drinking coffee at this time is okay. Plenty of time to sleep. What I'm going to add is a nip of a whiskey I got for Christmas. This is Cardu Gold. Oh yeah. Super smooth. I'm getting honey, pineapple. Aeroplanes. in the middle class conservatory very nice I remember the first time I bought a house of the conservatory I thought I've, I've truly joined the ranks of the, the lower middle class I was young and foolish that's not how the class system works Oh, I tell you what, that is grand with a drop of whiskey in it. Oh yeah, black coffee and cardu whiskey. I think I'll call it. I'll call it Orca coffee. I seem to be rambling a bit, but I swear I haven't been drinking. This is my first, my first nip. What I've got for later, I've got this is my water boot and this is my wine boot. I've got a cheeky Sicilian red in there, and these things are they're, they're just growlers uh, from the boxwood tap. I used to think that was the best pub in Bedlington, but I'm not so sure now. I, I suspect it's the best pub in the world. So I'm gonna get myself settled down for the night now, and I got this I got this new pillar for Christmas. It's by Climate. The guys who make those weird looking sleeping mats with all the bits cut out of them. I've never really got the pillar right on, on, on I've been camping, so I hope this is the answer. So I like quite the high pillar and you can kind of fold that into a, a higher pillow and just, it's a bit more configurable. So I hope that's going to be the answer to the question how do I get a nice pillow? The, the wind's getting worse here. It's really rattling the tent and I'm finding it hard to sleep and I don't think I should have had that coffee. Well, the cords are a bit stiff, but there's uh, here. ice. Oliver, he's not isolating, but there's no work for him at the paddock. Okay, yeah. So he's just in. Ah. <laughs> that looks a lot easier. Yeah. I remember like the, the, the scouts after camp would ask for a hand to roll the sleeping bag up.
I'm like, no. Yeah. That's how it's done, guys. <laughs> I bet you it's a tough gig this day and age. What? Being a scout leader and stuff. Uh, there's a lot more forms than there were in the 80s. Yeah. So I've got a roll. Morning folks, last night we camped on the, not quite at the top of Oak of Cairn, but looking down in the hen hole, so we couldn't see last night because of the, the mist, but have a look now. Hi guys, we're nearly back at the car now, and I have to say, I slept pretty well last night, but I did wake up at one in the morning after some pretty weird dreams, it's like, my brain always knows that I'm wild camping and I think subconsciously I'm scared of being rumbled so I dreamt that I was camping in my tent with Sean his tent beside and we're camping not on the hill but in like a stately garden and the gamekeeper and like all his mates came out in the early hours when it was dark and found her and we're like oh no but this gamekeeper was like oh don't, don't, don't worry don't worry at all um, we sometimes get proper mad wild campers here, like like Mickey, and I don't know who Mickey is. But then they were very nonchalant about it, and they were putting the rest and their feet on me tent and stuff, and they destroyed the pole on me hilly. And I woke, like I got up, and my tent was in bits, so the pole all broke, and and Sean was intact, and I hadn't bothered Sean, <laughs> and Sean was going, "Graham, what happened?" And I'm like, "Well, I've had people over in my dream. It was just..." proper bonkers but thanks for coming along last night it was a good little mini adventure <laughs>